is another word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Raw and uncut productions. Uh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on, and let's uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here. Okay. Um, you can reach the ministry by calling four seven five. Three zero zero three eight five zero. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle teacher and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ street and outreach ministry thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today I don't know what he's gonna do I don't even know if he's gonna have friends with me or not I don't know but we're gonna find out you can reach the ministry at 475 300 24 hours the ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr., and tonight we are going to delve into something that is going to be part two from a few days ago, which was on a Thursday, actually. Um, 
I like to give an honor to God, and I like to just ask you to have your Bibles, please. Your Bibles are very, very, very important. It's not good to listen to what a man or a woman say concerning the Word of God. It is best to have your Bible so that you can follow what the Scripture is saying, so you can read it yourself. We're going to be delving back into 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and you are not going to want to miss this. I'm telling you, you're not. One of the things that took so long was that I had to sit before the Holy Ghost and allow him to feed me and to give me this to share. A lot of times ministers don't take time and get into the Word of God. They, a lot of them don't do it. They don't spend time before the Lord. I know and have seen over the years, the 24 years that God, well, going on 25, that God has had me in the office of apostle. I have seen many ministers just look at the Bible, get a text, read it, and preach, even off of one verse. That's, that's not helping the body of Christ. Preaching has its place. It's interesting. It can be stirring, but also it can be entertaining. But it's very important that the word of God be explained to the body of Christ so that we understand what God is saying and what God is doing in this present time. Now, I'm not also one of the ministers that say, touch a neighbor and tell them, or tell 10 people, or I don't say amen every other word and glory, hallelujah, every other word, because my vocabulary is much broader than that. And I'm not trying to be facetious, but being very, inter uh, very true as to what the Lord is leading me to say. It's too much entertaining and not enough explaining. So then when people in the body of Christ begin to go through a crisis, a tragedy or a trauma, like what's going on right now in this world at this present time, they don't know what to do to get out of it. They think that just going to a place of worship is what gets you out of it or going and singing in the choir or ushering or even though they know the ministry is not feeding them, go anyway because this is what God would have them to do. There's so much, so much more that we need to know so that we that are called one in ministry, well, no, let me go back, so that we who are walking with God for real would know what he's doing and what he want to use us to do in the earth realm. The second thing we need to know is those of us that are in ministry, placed by God, not placed by Facebook, not going to Facebook Academy or Facebook Seminary School or none of that, but those that God has placed in ministry before Facebook even was, was, was in existence. Those of us that are in ministry placed by God, we need to know what he's doing and what he want to use us as vessels to feed his people. And number three, we need to know how to get out of a bind. How do we get through this era we're in? How do we get out of this trial? that we're in not just us but how do we rescue our family how do we rescue our children how do we fight for the whole nation except we be able to get fed from the word of god a lot of times people have said to me over these years apostle why are you so rough well scripture says and shows any true seasoned apostle, which in the Bible is only a male. Salvation is, see, that's, that's a whole different subject. That's so powerful. Salvation is done a certain way by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Anyway, all through Scripture, apostles, at least in the New Testament, because in the Old Testament, the office wasn't established. But in the New Testament, when the Lord established the office of apostles, he gave us cities, look at Matthew chapter 10, and he told us to go and teach and preach, making disciples for him. And also apostles, 
sent by God turn cities upside down. They address the issues in the city while God uses prophets and prophetesses to address the issues in the nation. Catch that revelation now. We have a job to do. And the evangelists, the Holy Ghost uses them to go and convince people to give their life to Jesus Christ so they don't go to hell. Pastors are supposed to, even in the Old Testament, sit over the flock and nurture them, feed them, protect them, minister to them. Be concerned for them. If one lead, they're supposed to go get them. You don't send sheep to go get sheep. All of that sheep beget sheep, that is not scripture. The Bible shows the shepherd. Jesus said, if you have 199 stay and one go, he didn't say, will you not pick a sheep to go get the sheep, but you go and get that one. God, who is the good shepherd, he came down here himself to come and get all of us <laughs> that he has called into his body. Teachers are dry and dogmatic, but we teachers are chefs of the word. We're used by God to cut up the word and to feed it either on a spoon or to give you bread or to give you milk or to give you water or for the, the seasoned sh a sheep to give you meat. It's too much in the body of Christ being neglected. And so again, when this world, this nation, this country begins to go through problems, everyone panics. So they heard the word government shutdown. <laughs> and they act like, I said they because I'm not one of them. They act like our blessings are determined by this government. Truth is, it's not. And this is what we're going to get into tonight. I'm very fired up. Praise God. I'm stirred up. I rebuke the devil. I've been fighting him all day. It's important that we get into this. So again, get your Bibles. And while you're doing that, allow me to pray. And I ask that you all come under this umbrella of prayer. I'm also asking that you allow God to use you to sow into the ministry. The link is right there on the description to the ministry's website. Don't, don't be selfish. The Lord wants to feed you. You're not paying for a blessing. You're not paying for a word. You're not paying me. You're not doing any of that. But it's time that we help one another. This ministry, out of our own pocket and out of what God put in our hands, are being used by God to help others and to do things, even to feed you. Now help us to help others. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you. God will bless you. He'll reward you. I'm sure you know that. And a lot of people say, well, I've been sowing, but have not been getting a good harvest. Well, where have you been sowing? A lot of people sow in the wrong place. They don't ask God, Lord, where do I sow? They go by emotion. Wow, look at that minister. They're charismatic. They stir me up. They make me feel good. So I'm going to sow. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. And the devil has sent ministers to trick you to tell you good things and to give you hope and say to you, double your seed, triple your seed, give X amount of dollars. Well, brethren, I wouldn't dare do a thing like that. The Holy Ghost only leads me to say this, share what the Holy Ghost plays in your is not heart. it's only for the ministry so that it comes in and go out it's called being a channel for blessing too many people are not being a channel they're either being a victim a victim being took being had some ministries now they got the swiper that you swipe your credit card all of that is wrong it's wrong brethren it's wrong Oh, I'm stirred up. As the Lord lead me to go in prayer, I just ask you to come under this umbrella. And again, look at the description. Even the prayer list is up there where you can send your prayer list. The phone number is up there. I, I don't have the phone number. I normally turn it off. 
It's in uh, the other room, and if it rings, I'm going to hear it, uh, and that's the truth. The ministry's number is 475-300-3850, and it's important. Some of you really need somebody to stand with you in prayer right now because there's some things come, that's coming. The shutdown, the word shutdown, that's not it. There's more coming. What about those that don't get paid? What are they going to do with their bills? How are they going to pay their bills? What about the landlords, even those that go to what they call the house of God and they claim to be Christians? Are they going to say to the tenants, I understand what's going on. I'll let you go by? No. 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 Join with me in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you asking you to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Please stand by us. Please protect us. Please help us. Please minister to us. Please encourage us. Make me usable and use me. Fill me with the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word and allow me, oh God, to be used by you to minister to your people, those that are going to be watching by television or by VHS or by DVD, those that are going to be driving in their cars listening by audio CD or at home listening by audio cassette or those that are watching by Facebook Live or watch parties or, or YouTube or Google Plus. Minister to your people, Shikanda. Send your anointing through this ministry out to the different platforms that thou has prepared to use this ministry through, on, and by. <sighs> oh God, allow me to decrease that you may increase. Baffle the Facebook celebrities those that watch people minister even in the place of worship and then they come home and get in front of their computer some of them don't even put on no clothes they just turn the light off and preach copycats imitators no work done but claiming to be used by you no victory no power nothing but the spirit of imitation Baffle them. Please, Father. So that when they try to copy, not just this ministry, but other sent ministers, that they don't even be able to do it. Take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Please, Father. Because your people are being tricked by these deceivers. And they're getting in a worse jam. These people are telling your people to give their last finances and saying that you said. When in scripture you clearly said give out of your increase. Oh Lord, <laughs> it's time for you to write on the wall again. It's time for you to let your glory be seen by those of us that walk with you. It's time. It's time for you to speak. Arise now, Holy Father. Holy Ghost. Arise now and speak. And feed your people. Give them a clear definition of words in scripture give them a clear understanding of what you meant when you were writing this book and again allow me to decrease that you may increase and feed me also in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus mighty and matchless name we thank you and we pray. Amen. And Satan, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we rebuke you. 
we plead the blood against you that you can't do anything to God's people. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I'm trying to find my, there it is. Second Chronicles, chapter seven. But this right here is part two. Because there were some things that we needed to get into that an hour wasn't enough time. And I thank God for having a studio, praise God, that belongs to this ministry so that God can use us to go longer than an hour, if need be. Oh, some don't understand. Inside the place of what they call worship, they spend three hours on what they call praise and worship usually done by people that have been clubbing all week or people that are living frivolous lifestyles. They'll have a pastor's anniversary of a pastor you can't even call at 3 o'clock in the morning only to get your denarii. They'll have a first lady's anniversary or honor of a lady who don't even set the example that the first lady should set. In the dictionary, the word first lady means lady of influence. There's so much going on in the place that, it, that they disguise as being called the house of God. And anybody and everybody is trying to force their way into ministry with no anointing. There's some that do have an anointing that God has called, but some have went ahead of God and are going ahead of God now. And right down the road, there is a train wreck. And then when it comes to the word of God, the famous cliche is this. I'm not going to be before you long. Okay, so you done bored me half to death with all the other stuff. You done said amen so many times. I thought you was writing a book. But when it comes to the word of God, you want to jit me. Entertain people for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe a half hour, and then say it's time to pay your tithes, which tithes in the Bible does not mean money. It doesn't mean that. It's from the Hebrew word miasra, and it just means the tenth and the tenth part. It don't even mean 10%. In the Old Testament, money was not a commodity. That's not how you determine a person's wealth. So like the Lord led me to say in one of the prior broadcasts, You've been had. You've been took. The tenth, when it was first shared or offered, was by Abram to Melchizedek. Actually, in the Hebrew, there's no ch in that language. It's Melchizedek. And Melchizedek, that was a theophany, which is a pre- Bethlehem appearance of Christ and Abraham offered unto him a tenth he wasn't commanded to give but he offered Melchizedek actually told him take it but he said give it to the kings that helped me fight Give it to them. God's people know how, need to learn how to say no. Not yes to everything. Even with speaking engagements, going to ministries that are in trouble and they call you. A lot of ministries call people that don't even know how to kick the devil out of a ministry. Don't consider yourself a celebrity. Because they call you. Some ministers only call you because they know you're not going to come in and give a word 
of correction. But you're only going to come in and say, God is with you. <laughs> the Lord is going to make a way. Lying. That was in scripture too. There was prophets that did that. Mm -mm. David wanted to build God a house. But God told him no. His hands had too much bloodshed. And remember the stuff David did. He was a man after God's own heart. But brother David, the prophet, the king, had issues. So what the Lord did do was tell him that Solomon, his son, was going to build the temple. Chapter 2 of Second Chronicles is when he started to build the temple and the palace. In chapter 1 of 2 Chronicles, I'm just going to read this, these few verses and then we'll jump over to verse, chapter uh, 7, verse 14. But I just, I'm led by the Holy Ghost to give you a little backdrop for those of you that have not read this encounter. Out of the King James Version. Chapter 1 of Second Chronicles, verse 1. And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord his God was with him and magnified him exceedingly. Now, this is the same brother that fell years later and ended up writing the book of Ecclesiastes, which appears to be written by a very deranged individual. It was written by this same brother. A lot of ministers start out with God and then fall. Even after God allowed them to become successful, they leave God. World-renowned ministers, Jake's, Joyce Meyer, all of them. Juanita Bynum, huh. all of them. Joe Osteen, they will tell you if the check don't come, praise God anyway, but call them and ask them to come to your ministry if you're in leadership and tell them the check didn't come, but would you come? See what they'll tell you. Hypocrites. Chapter 1, Second Chronicles, verse 1, again. And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and magnified him exceedingly. Then Solomon spake unto all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in all Israel, the chief of the fathers. So Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon. For there was a tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. Research Exodus chapter 33 to learn about the tabernacle of the congregation. You'll be surprised what you find. But the ark of God that David brought up from Kerhath Jerim to the place which David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Moreover, the brazen altar that Bezaliel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. Now, ministers want to tell you that the law is pay 10% of your income. Well, they're going to try to throw you some of the law. Then they need to throw you all of the law. You need to go get some dogs and bulls and all of that and make sacrifices unto God. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. I was only kidding. I know some probably want to get up right now and go kill their dog. Don't do it. The point that God is using me to make is you can't take half of it and not all of it. And the half that they take, they twist it, step on it, and serve it to you. Mm -mm. You've been took. 
Verse 7, in that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, ask what I shall give thee. Now, don't think that Solomon really thought this up on himself because none of us in our flesh would ever approach God with anything that glorified God. But if we're not walking with God, then what we would do is ask God for something that glorified us. Some people have said, Apostle, you take some pictures, a lot of pictures. We like what you wear when you take pictures. The pictures are not, really for, not show. for show. They're actually for stationary. Because if you take pictures, like if I take one of me standing right here, instead of using other people's stuff for stationary or clip art or whatever, I can use my own. So I can do like this and take a picture and then post it and write a caption under it. Even when we're dressed, when we go to the supermarket or to diners or wherever we go and we take a picture, it's for stationary. There's a lot of people who take pictures to show off what they have or go in stores and try on clothes and take a picture as if it's theirs. They do it because they're vain. That's the pride of life. The pride of life. God is not going to give you stuff to glorify you or you or you. But he's going to give you stuff that's going to glorify him. Okay. Jesus told the disciples it is easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Does that mean rich people can't go to heaven? Somewhat. But there's those people that God give wealth to after he teach them how to be wealthy, not how to get wealth because God gives wealth, but he teaches us how to have stuff. If you're smoking cigarettes and you're in the ministry and you expect God to give you the big payola, he's not going to do it. Why? Because $10 and some change or $11, however much cigarettes cost, I don't smoke no more, but however much they cost, that's what your money will go to. So there's people that take money out of the ministry and go and buy their own stuff. They buy cigarettes. They'll buy wine. Some people even buy weed or, or heroin or crack, believe it or not. There's a lot of ministers that are undercover crackheads that some of you don't even know about. You think that pastor or prophetess or evangelist is standing in the pulpit high on the Holy Ghost. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not all of them. Some of them, but not all. Let's tell the truth. God said, ask what I shall give thee. You know the scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. When you delight yourself in the Lord, then you want what he wants. And then you only ask him what he intends to give you anyway. And then there's an, an agreement between the earth, the heavenly, the spiritual realm, and the earth realm. And then you get it. That's why naming and claiming it don't work. Because naming and claiming it come from the person, not God. Declaring and decreeing. There's a lot of ministers ignorantly doing that. I declare your health. Then the person died. I declare your financial blessing. Then the person gets even worse in debt. I declare you to be debt free. And then they never get debt free. Because no man or woman can declare or decree nothing. It's God that does it. He declares and he decrees. Let the church say amen. <laughs> verse 8 and Solomon said unto God thou hast shewed great mercy unto David my father and has made me to reign in his stead and now excuse me now verse 9 O Lord God let thy promise unto David my father be established for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this thy people that is so great. He said the ministry is large. I can't do this on my own. There's a lot of ministers running the ministry not filled with the Holy Ghost at all. Don't speak in their tongue but the 
the natural one. And then when they want to impress the people, they go ba 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 sha ma 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 ha ya sha ya ya. That is not a holy tongue. It's not. It, ba ba ta da. None of that is holy. The Bible says that when we get filled with the Holy Ghost, he gives us the gift of speaking in tongues and he uses us as he gives us utterance. You can't just jump all into tongues right quick. You can't do that. Slide all into tongues. You can't do that. You can't do that. Sit down and be quiet. <laughs> Got to throw some humor on it because it's funny. You can't speak in tongues unless the Holy Ghost leads you. There's a lot of ministers that because they don't speak in tongues, they'll tell you, oh, there's no need of speaking in tongues. And we, everybody don't speak in tongues. Then they ignorantly twist 1 Corinthians 12, which says, does all speak in tongues? No. Now, see, this is where studying is important because right there, the scripture, Brother Paul was being used by the Holy Ghost. If you turn there, if you can't, don't worry about it. Just write it down and look at it on your own time. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Listen to what the Holy Ghost told Brother Paul to write. He said, chapter 12 verse 1 now concerning spiritual gifts brethren i will not have you ignorant he said ye know that ye were gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as ye were led wherefore i give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit capital s this is the holy ghost spirit of god calleth jesus accursed or anathema that's the word and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Well, that cancels the deathbed confession. Person get ready to die. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you believe God raised him from the dead? Do you believe, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart? Because the Bible says you will be saved. Yeah. And then they lift up their eyes in hell. Because you told them. They can't say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Read Romans 10 again. Read, don't just stop at 10 and 9. Read verse 1 and keep walking past 10. And don't jog through it. Walk through it and watch what you see. Then it says, Verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, capital S, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. So it's clear that the Apostle Paul is used by the Holy Ghost to write about spiritual gifts. Now, when he jumps way over there in verse 12, he said, for as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Watch this. For by one spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I have not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? He's talking about ministry gifts. So he started uh, 1 Corinthians 12 talking about spiritual gifts and got to verse 12 and started talking about ministry gifts. Why? Because the spiritual gifts operate the ministry gifts. Read that on your own time. So you get down to where do all speak in tongues? Do every ministry gift speak? Have used tongues as part of the delivery of their ministry of the operation? No. Who do? Prophets, prophetesses, evangelists, apostles, because they walk in all four of the other offices. Speaking in tongues is part of how God uses us as he's using us to minister. Now, everyone Holy Ghost filled has the gift of tongues personally in their life. 
1 Corinthians 14. Read that in your own time. Back to 2 Chronicles. He said, verse 10, for who can judge this thy people that is so great? The ministry is large. Solomon is admitting, I can't lead them. I, I can't do this without you. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, in the Bible when you see heart, it means spirit. God is saying, because this is in your spirit, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Whose wisdom? God's wisdom. Whose knowledge? God's knowledge. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. It's time that we depend on God. Now read verse 13 through 17 on your own. Chapter 2, Solomon prepares to build a temple and a palace. Chapter 3, Solomon begins building of the temple. Excuse me, he were told the dimensions, the materials, the ornaments of the temple. He got to the Ark of the Covenant. Well, actually, and in the most holy house, he made two cherubims of image work and overlaid them with gold. Chapter 4, the altar of brass, the, la the lavers, candlesticks, and tables, and the courts and instruments of brass, and the instruments of gold. Chapter 5, dedicated treasures deposited in the temple. The ark solemnly introduced. Mm -hmm. God gives a visible token of his favor. He proved that he approved of all this. In chapter 6, verse 1, Then said Solomon, The Lord had said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. But I have built a house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build a house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. Solomon never took credit. Here, anyway, he gave it to God. Verse 6, God said, But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart, spirit, of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel, the name of the Lord God, a memorial. But the Lord said to David my father, For as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. God said, It's good that you wanted to do this. Okay. All right. I'm cool with that. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house. But thy son, which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. For I am risen up in the room, meaning the, the place of David my father, and am set on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Some of you are in ministry because someone in your family prayed for you. Your forefathers, your grandmother, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your great-grandmother. 
your father, your mother, they prayed for you. And God made a covenant with them. Maybe they're not here to see it come to pass. But God is using you or giving you the opportunity to be used by him because of a covenant that was made before you even came along. It's important that you run your course. In verse 12, Solomon's dedicatory prayer of chapter 6, 2 Chronicles, and he prayed this prayer, dedicating this place to God. The last verse of chapter 6 is verse 42. Solomon said, O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. Chapter 7, verse 1 says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Whenever a prophet or a prophetess or an apostle being used by God beckons the presence of God he shows up some of you go to ministries where it appears that they have beckoned God's presence 10 hours of singing 12 hours of music Another five hours of singing and music. Everybody jumping, screaming, running around, rolling out on the floor. Sometimes God, in fact, 99% of that time, God is not there. That's the spirit of emotion. You might say, well, apostle, uh-uh, I know God was there. What scripture do you have to support that? Right here, when God showed up, he consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house and the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. There was no movement. Some of you understand this. When the Holy Ghost manifests his presence, there's a spirit of worship. 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 Communion, sweet communion, to fellowship with you is what we long to do. Communion, holy communion, Lord, we long to commune with you yeah communion sweet communion to fellowship with you is what we long to do yeah communion Holy communion, Lord, we long to commune with you. Yes, Lord. His presence. When he comes, his presence. So powerful that he even moves through airways moves through cameras, moves through social media. But the point is, 
and the task is getting in the place where God is. Solomon prayed and then he waited and God responded. Many people call this prayer our Father, which art in heaven, blah, 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 Jesus, and they, amen. All right, see you later. That's not prayer. Mm -mm. Many people call this prayer. Oh, I, I beseech the Lord to bless you and to help you, and I trust God, and I declare and decree. That's not prayer. Prayer, theologically is a two-sided conversation with God. <laughs> two-sided. Solomon talked as the Holy Ghost led him, mind you, and he poured out to God. And after he made an end of praying, Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 1. The fire came down from heaven. The priest couldn't even move. Verse 3, and when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped. And praised the Lord saying, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Go ahead and say it. That means they gave their tithes and offerings. No. They offered sacrifices. Verse 5 says, And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people, de they dedicated the house of God. It didn't say nothing about money right there. And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord. David made the instruments. Because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. No, they didn't run across the pews. They didn't jump over like they were the new Avengers. They didn't do any of that. They stood. Moreover, Solomon hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. Also, at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days and all Israel with him. A very great, meaning big, congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. Verse 9, and in the eighth day, eight, the number of new beginning, they made a solemn assembly. They restraint. A restraint. For they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart, meaning spirited, for the goodness that the Lord had shewed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people. When God showed up, everybody was blessed. And they were feeling joy in their heart. Not, and that's their spirit, but not emotional. Didn't nobody come 
with the tunic or with the sheet and stand behind nobody expecting them to fall out so they could cover him. That's so traditional. Whoever started that, well, they're not here now. But that ain't what, that's not what they did. They went away into their tents, glad and merry and spitted for the goodness that the Lord has shewed unto David. The Lord proved that he was with that ministry, not just with Solomon, but with his father. God confirmed the covenant he made with his father through the son. The people saw this and they were happy. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life will be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table. Sad.
satisfied. 